Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a discussional type chat video with a topic in mind. Now I am out camping right now currently. I've got my tent set up. I've got a hot cup of coffee. It is peak of fall season right now and I'm enjoying the scenery. But one thing that has been bothering me lately is just irking at me. The question is, is bushcraft dead? Let's talk about it. Alright guys, we're going to dive deep into the rabbit hole on this one, so I highly recommend you go and get yourself a hot cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee because we're going to go in really, really deep on this one. So, what is bushcraft? Let's start off here. What is bushcraft? What does it mean? Bushcraft has changed over the years to just... It went from A all the way to Z, literally. It is, it is nothing compared to what it used to be. So the true meaning, the real essence of bushcraft is to go out into the woods with a traditional kit and live off of the land. You're gonna craft the things that you need to survive. So typically you have a heavy ax, you know, a lot of augers, hand drills, knives, oil skin tarps, uh, all that traditional stuff that can be used in the forest to create more items. So you would bring your knife and you would, you know, go collect birch bark, make a birch bark container or a cup. Uh, you take your ax and you would, you would build a log cabin. So for example, I've got this beautiful piece of hardwood here. You would craft something out of this, whether it's a cook set cup or it's a spoon, that is bushcraft. You are crafting from the land in a respectful way. Now that word right there, respectful way is a huge, huge topic that I want to talk about because right now I'm camping with a teepee style hot tent. It's a modern tent. It's not an oil skin. It's not a traditional canvas. It's a synthetic fabric. Can I go bushcrafting with that? Absolutely. Absolutely I can go bushcrafting with that because bushcrafting in its essence is living off of the land. It doesn't matter if I have a synthetic shelter with me because I can do everything else bushcraft. I can make my own cup. I can make my own fork, my spoon. I can do everything with this. It doesn't mean that I have to go and build a fort in the woods to be bushcrafting. There are all kinds of talented individuals out there that are really hardcore bushcrafters and they still bring a hammock or a tent with them. Just everything else they do is really, really interesting bushcraft themed items. Now, two things I want to talk about. Bushcraft and survival. Are they the same? No, they're not. Bushcraft is living off of the land intentionally. You're purposely going to go out there and live off of the land. Survival is not intentional. You do not put yourself intentionally in a life or death situation. That happens. It's not something that you design. It just happens, okay? So survival is an instinct based off of skills that you learned previously. Maybe you learn those skills through bushcraft, but bushcraft is not survival. And that's something that gets twisted so many different ways here on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, Facebook. We see it all over the place. People use this term bushcraft as a form of camping when realistically they're not bushcrafting. And a quick coffee break. Hot coffee on a cold day, can't beat it. So. If you guys are still with me on this topic, we're gonna dive even deeper, okay? So being an influencer slash YouTuber, such as myself, anything that I do in front of you guys, on camera, anything I do, whether it's in a video or a photo, somebody is going to be influenced by that. My job, my personal responsibility that I hold myself to is to influence you in a positive manner. I don't want to influence anyone to go and do something negative, okay? And that is the biggest reason why Lone Wolf 902 is no longer doing fort building videos. I have many tents, I have many tarps. I do not need to go out into the woods and go and cut down live trees just to build a fort for the purpose of a video. And I really wish that a lot of other channels would stop doing that. Now, there is something that uh, you, it's totally up in the air and I believe that this is the way it should be done. I own private property. I don't visit my private property anymore for YouTube because it's an air traffic zone. There are so many planes that fly over and I don't like filming with the air traffic sounds. It just ruins the video. 
but I do have personal property and I have many friends that own wood lots of personal property that I have permission to go and build forts on. And that's the word that I want to keep using, forts, okay? They're not bushcraft shelters, they're not survival shelters, they are forts. You guys are building forts to basically make money on YouTube. You're damaging the forest, you're damaging the natural habitat of so many animals and it's just, it's, it's for the purpose of money, okay? It is educational and that's why I'm saying if you have personal property, Two thumbs up. Two thumbs up to you. You do whatever you want on your personal property. I'm a huge supporter of that. Now, I have a lot of tents. I'm here on YouTube. All the other channels out there that are massive, way bigger than my channel, guess what? They get things sent to them for free as well. So they have a plethora of tents, tarps, shelters, hammocks, you name it. And these channels go out there and still build these forts and a lot of them are not being done on private property which is the sad part now a lot of the other big channels some of them are very respectful i will say that not everyone is damaging the forest there are a small group of these people that are doing it but this is where things get really really bad we are influencers okay so if you're going to be putting it on camera someone else is going to take that and they're going to go hey i don't have private property but I know where there's an open woodland that I can go build a fort. Now they're going to do it. And they might not be so respectful about it as some of us are. They're going to destroy the woodland. So me personally here in Nova Scotia, Canada, a lot of the spots that I return to in my videos, they're being damaged. There are people, locals that come out here and just damage the area, cutting down live trees, recreating what they see on YouTube. Because it's a cool thing to do, right? It's cool to do bushcraft and survival. And I love bushcraft and survival. Don't get me wrong. That's how I started. And I still have content on my channel that is bushcraft and survival oriented. However, me being an influencer, I'm going to take one for the team. And I'm not going to do any more of it on my channel. Unless it is a wind fallen tree. So if it's a tree that came down and it is, it is down, it's dead. I will possibly use that structure or that tree to build a shelter and have some fun with it because it's already down. Now I'm not going to go out cutting down trees, I'm not going to go and fell trees and, and build a fort and all that stuff. So just, just really pay attention to what I'm saying about respecting the environment and the area that you live in and recreate in. Alright, so here on YouTube we have things that are known as trends and keywords, okay? These are two very important things. This is how the videos surface to the viewers, you guys. So keywords and trends are really important. Let's talk about trends. Trending, if you use bushcraft as a theme and it picks up, it grows in interest and then it comes more, uh, more surface. So it, it gets advertised to you guys as viewers and it's tailored to your needs, to what you enjoy watching. So that is a growing trend. Just like hot tenting, a couple of years ago, hot tenting was not that, it wasn't really popular. A lot of people didn't know anything about it. Now, hot tenting is banging. It is super trendy, and I do it a lot. And I notice in the comments section, more and more and more people are getting into hot tenting. And that's incredible. That's awesome. That is a trend that is growing. So there are YouTubers out there that might have never gone hot tenting, and now they see it blowing up, so they jump in to the hot tenting trend because a lot of these channels want to be in that area. Now, there are channels that are organic and there are channels that are commercialized. The organic channels do things that they like to do. We do what we like to do. I do what I like to do. I never made my channel uh, Lone Wolf Bushcraft. I just made it Lone Wolf 902. The 902 is for my area code if you're wondering, but I never wanted to put that ball and chain on my ankle and nail it down to Lone Wolf Hot Tenting or Lone Wolf Hammock Camping. Lone Wolf 902, I do whatever I want to do that particular day. So if I want to bring a hot tent, I bring a hot tent. If I want to bring a hammock, I bring a hammock. I don't follow any of the trends on YouTube. I just do what I want to do. And this is how trends are or organically created. Okay, so you have organic created trends and then you have synthetic trends. Trends that are basically a bunch of YouTubers get together and they start doing certain things and then it's influenced among people and then non-YouTubers start doing it and then it picks up on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok and now it turns into a trend. So that's a synthetic trend that is made to grow. Organic trends, you just do what you want to do and a large crowd of people will find that interesting and they too will follow and then it starts to grow. And then we have a thing called keywords. Keywords is mainly generated for YouTube algorithm and analytics 
trends follow keywords. So if you have a keyword such as hot tenting or overlanding or hammock camping or bushcraft, survival, those two words are big keywords in YouTube right now because they're trending. They have been trending for the last 10 years. However, there are a lot of people that jump on this bandwagon and use the word bushcraft. And let's say they're only a cooking channel. They will say bushcraft cooking or bushcraft overnighter with a hot tent. They're just using that word as, a, as an anchor. It's a keyword that gets surfaced among YouTube searches. So when you type in bushcraft, it pops up. Now the problem with that is it's no longer it's no longer trending. It's really not. Bushcraft is so widespread that the, the, you're no longer you're a needle in a haystack essentially. So anytime you use bushcraft, it used to be focused in on a small group, and your videos were being surfaced a lot, and everybody started using the word bushcraft. And now it's this big, and your one video is just a speck of salt in the sea of bushcraft tags and keywords. So it's no longer effective, but people still do it. And that's the misconception between what is bushcraft and what is wild camping, what is survival, what is just camping. So where in the heck am I going with this? Bushcraft, survival, hot tenting, keywords, tags, trends, algorithms, where am I going with this? What I'm trying to say is, is bushcraft really dead? Has it been monopolized? Has it been commercialized? Has it been mutated so many times that it is no longer bushcraft? I personally feel, yes, it has been. I don't believe bushcraft is what it used to be. I believe we have a massive group that is huge, and then we've got a little bit group here, just a, just a tiny little dwindling group that is true bushcraft, modified bushcraft. That's my personal opinion. What do you guys think? Drop it down in the comment section and let me know, do you agree with me or do you maybe think something else is happening here? Because me personally, I believe bushcraft is dead. I believe it's been changed so many times over the years that it is no longer bushcraft. I believe it's been commercialized so many times people throw it in their title or maybe they go out and they do like a, a bushcraft cookout and then they're camping in a hammock or they're truck camping or whatnot. Because we see this on a lot of survival channels and bushcraft channels lately. The hardcore bushcraft and survival channels. You got the really good ones and then you got the ones that are just kind of puppets and they follow along the trend and they do whatever they want to do. So we have survival channels that are now jumping into overlanding. And they call it overlanding. They pitch a little shelter two feet away from their truck. And they know nothing about overlanding. They've never gone overlanding before. They literally film nothing to do with overlanding at all. They just pitch a little tablecloth shelter next to the truck and they call it overlanding. It's not overlanding, okay? So here on my channel, I actually go overlanding. I go four by fouring. I don't film everything, but I try and film enough of it to give you guys an overland kick because that is what I do. I've been building trucks for the last 15 years, going out in the woods and doing that kind of stuff. It's not something I just started doing. It's something I just started adding to the channel because now I have a truck that's presentable and it has more capabilities. So this is something that you'll see is a trend. Now those channels are starting to jump into the trend because it's cool, just like they did when bushcraft was cool. Well, bushcraft is still cool. Don't get me wrong. I love bushcraft. It's just what we see on YouTube and what we see from the influencers, it's not bushcraft anymore. That's my personal take on that. I feel that all these major channels are just jumping on the bandwagon and creating what is trending and they're just titling it to be something when it's really not. So it, it's a trend that is being exploited and just blown out just like Bushcraft did. And it's, it, it's so far from what it used to be, it's almost sickening. All right, so let's get back on track with Bushcraft being dead. Do I think it is dead? Yes. Why? Because a lot of my personal areas that I go to on Crown Land here in Nova Scotia are being destroyed. I have a number of favorite locations such as this location right here that I keep returning to. I have probably about five to ten locations that I eventually I just make a big circle. I'll camp here one night. Next night I'll go to another location. But they're all regular locations that I show on the channel. And the reason why I do that is because I don't want to show too much on camera because other people see it and they go oh i know where that is i'm going to go there and then they share it with their friend and then they share it with another friend and next thing you know the entire location's destroyed 
okay? So I never share my locations with anybody. If anyone recognizes location, I highly, highly recommend not saying it in the comment section. Just let it be, because if you, if you share those locations, they get overpopulated. And then we get people from the city or out of town that come up here and just destroy the area and they leave. They come here for their one night fix, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, they're gone. They don't care what the area looks like when they leave. And that hurts us people that actually enjoy these natural wild locations that our government gives to us for free to come and recreate on, to come camp, hunt, fish, as long as you take care of it. So right now, you'll see that there is an established fire pit here. There's only one fire pit here. I've gone to locations I have one fire pit. Now there's 15, 20 of them in the same area. Why? Why can't you just take the firewood and go to the fire pit that's already established? It just doesn't make any sense. So doing this keeps the area nice and clean and orderly. This pile of rocks says, put the fire here. Now in bushcraft, we have all kinds of these little forts popping up deep into the forest way deep in the forest you'll be out deer hunting and you'll stumble across one of these bushcraft shelters that someone built and they got rope wrapped around the trees they've got all kinds of food wrappers all over the place just because they wanted to go out and get a couple snaps for their instagram or maybe a youtube video just to show their friends they never go back and clean it up unfortunately and it just destroys the areas totally so with bushcraft it, it's it's such a, a, a it's so controversial nowadays. What is bushcraft? What is survival? What is camping? What I'm trying to say is me, I'm going to be a responsible outdoorsman and I'm not going to be doing any of that stuff, as I mentioned earlier, on my channel anymore. Yes, I do have private property to go and do it, but I don't want to influence my audience. I don't want to influence people that are passing by the channel and see me building a shelter and going, oh, well, Lone Wolf's doing it too, so it must be cool. I don't want to be roped up in that crowd. I just want to be an outdoorsman, happy, doing what I'm doing right here, keeping the land nice and orderly. When I leave here tomorrow, the only thing that I'm going to leave likely is a dry spot because it's raining, it's wet. So that's all that should be left behind. I'm going to take my synthetic tent that everybody has. I'm going to take my synthetic sleeping bag. I didn't have to go and cut down all these spruce boughs and whatnot to, to build a bed. We know how to find survival content. We can go and read a book. We can look at pictures. We don't need to have a thousand videos on cutting down live trees and building these elaborate forts just to put on YouTube so that creator or that influencer can get rich off of it. And then it's just, it, it's, it's horrible. It's horrible what it's become. And I myself take responsibility for doing bushcraft shelters on my own property because it influenced other people to go out there and do it. And there's so many people in the world that if you look at 20 years ago, the population was small. The bushcraft crowd was really small. It wasn't doing any damage to our planet, but now it's so popular that everybody wants to try it. And when they try it, they leave a mess because they show up, they trash the forest, and they just leave a mess. And then they go home, they upload their pictures, and that's all. That's it. That's all they get out of it. All right, so I hope I didn't upset anybody too badly. Um, I just, this has been really bothering me a lot lately. And as my channel's growing, so is the audience, so are the views, and so is the influence. And there's that word again, the influence. And I don't want to influence people in destroying the, the woodlands or polluting the waterways and all that stuff. So I'm going to be gearing my channel more towards the modern outdoorsman. It is 2021. I don't need to go out there and down a deer and skin its hide just to throw it on my back and look cool on camera. I don't need to do that. So I'm going to be gearing my channel, being a responsible woodsman, and I'm just going to be doing what is practical. Because you got to remember, those bushcraft and those survival channels or those videos, they're all choreographed. They're all fake. There's no way someone's going to go out there and in one day build this elaborate shelter. Okay, I grew up bushcrafting, and some of those shelters take three to four, five days to build. These people are going out there premeditated with the plan to collect all the firewood off camera, store it off camera, hide all the spruce boughs, get everything squared away. And then they return on camera and record what they want you to see. And then they go off camera, grab all the pre-cut wood. So it's not even real. It's not even an organic content anymore. It's just, it's, it's staged and it's fake. What we got here is wild camping. This is totally organic. I grabbed my stuff, I packed it this morning, I head out to the woods, 
Whatever happens, happens. It's real, it's not planned. And those cooking channels, the same thing, they go out bushcraft cooking. They already have a meal or recipe planned. They go to an area, they do what they gotta do. Now, I watch a lot of this stuff myself. So I'm not saying that I wanna see it removed from YouTube because it is very, very educational. And a lot of it is entertaining and I do enjoy watching it myself. But there is a group that do it good and there's a group that do it bad. But we have to remember the influence. What is being influenced and what is the message being sent from those posts, from those videos, from those photos? What is the message that is really being sent? All right, guys, so that's basically all I've got. What do you guys think about the topic and the chat and the conversation here? Do you think bushcraft has been manipulated so far beyond recognition that it is basically monopolized and a commercialized industry? Or do you think bushcraft is still really bushcraft? Because it's a really hard choice for me. I, I've got to say it has been monopolized and mutated so many times that it is just a buzzword. It's a popular word that people use. It's a popular thing that people do to get attention. And it just, it destroys our environment. It destroys our woodland. There's no problem in bringing a tent like this, setting it up, using a synthetic sleeping bag, a sleeping pad, which realistically all of us are gonna have. Nobody's gonna go out into the woods in wintertime with just a jacket and pants on and then end up in this horrible survival situation that then they need to, oh, I remember that time I cut down all these trees and built this fort. like. The, the odds of that happening, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. Of course it does happen. There's a very, very small percentage that that could happen. But realistically, if you're going out into the woods, you know that you're going out in the woods overnight camping. I did this morning when I got up. That's why I brought my tent, because I knew I was going to be out here. I knew it was going to rain, so I brought my wood stove to dry out all my clothing. I knew that. I didn't just throw myself into oblivion and go, oh no, it's raining, now I gotta cut down five trees to make a little fort and take a picture and, and then go home tomorrow, right? So that's the message that I'm trying to send to you guys. Uh, I, I really wanna know what you guys think. Drop it down in the comment section for sure. What do you guys think? Do you think this bushcraft and survival stuff has just blown up and it's way too much now? People are ruining it? Or do you think it's kind of on par where it used to be 10, 15 years ago? Let me know. I'm going to go back to camping now and uh, finish up my coffee. So peace out, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.